my, mm, I guess, top of my list things that I really, really am aiming for is to outsource. Welcome to the Healthy Celiac Show. I'm your host, Belinda Whelan from belindawhelan.com. And here you will learn to live your very best life with celiac disease. So we are going to be talking all about health related topics because you, my friend, are more than just a woman with celiac disease. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss an episode and welcome to the show. All right, all right. After a very intense topic last week, I am back for a little bit more of a loose conversation today because I think it was very serious last week and I got very emotional towards the end. So this week I want to share with you some ways to help you with your brain fatigue. Now when I'm talking about brain fatigue, I'm not talking about the side effects of having gluten. I'm talking about the side effects of living with celiac disease as a whole and the actual effects that that has on us because we have so much more to deal with, don't we? We have so much more to think about. So most people can get up in the morning, get ready, have their breakfast and be out the door and that's all they have to do. Whereas we have a bit more pre-planning to do before we walk out the door, don't we? We need to make sure that we either have food to take with us, we need to know where we're going to be able to eat, we need to know that we're going to be safe and so many other factors. So it's not as easy for us to live our life as what other people have it. So I feel that there is a bit more of a burden on us and that sometimes it causes this brain fatigue. So this constant thinking, this constant overanalyzing, this constant worrying. So when we make things a little bit easier on ourselves, then it it lessens that fatigue. So I wanted to share with you some of my top little tips of what makes my life just that little bit easier. So starting at the top, my very first thing is a simple shopping list. Now, this is not life-changing, guys, but (laughs) this little tip here, this is my, my thing that I find has been a saving grace with my husband and I. So what we used to do, we used to get a piece of paper and we'd stick it in our pantry and we would write on there when we needed something from the shops. So we'd pop it on there, you know, we, this week we need milk, we need plain flour, we need gluten-free pasta, whatever. Whatever it was, we would pop it on that list. <sighs> and sometimes, you know, we'd use something up and one of us would forget to put it on the list or we'd go to the shops and we'd left the list behind. So it worked to a degree, but in the end it was just causing us both grief. And then one day I decided this is not happening anymore. I'm so sick of this. And I whipped out my phone and I created a note in my phone and I added my husband to it, but he could edit it and he could have access to it. And now we have a running list that we basically, whenever we need something, we jump on there, we hit tick on it that it needs to be bought next time we go to the shops. And that way, when we go to the shops, one of us will untick it and then it's done. We know we've purchased it. So this is our foolproof way of using our shopping list. Oh my God, it's so simple, but it's so ridiculously easy and has changed the way we shop and communicate so much better. (laughs) So I I even remember a few months back, it might have even been before Christmas actually, we were racing around the shops. We were in such a hurry to get our shopping done. And basically what we did was one of us went one direction, one of us went the other direction with our shopping carts. And we got through our shopping list twice as fast because whenever he found something on the list that we had to get, he'd mark it off. And then same with me and we got through it so quickly. So that was super fun to do that and know that we weren't doubling up on anything or missing out on anything. So yeah, it works really, really well. All right. The next thing is meal planning. So meal planning doesn't have to be as full on as Some people make it, it can be very simple. It can be as simple as rotating through your family's favorite meals, or it could be sitting down and going through recipe book after recipe book, or having a look at meal plans made easy, which is my gluten-free meal planning system. So there's lots of different ways that you can meal plan, but I find that when you know what you're having for the week ahead, it makes shopping that little bit easier and it stops that whole oh, what are we going to cook today? Oh, what does everyone want to have to eat? You know what you're doing for the week. 
There's no stress about running back and forth to the shops. It's just a, such an easy way to be organized. So I do love meal planning. All right, my third tip is to have a synced calendar. If you have a busy family like I do, so we have a family of five and our daughter, our eldest daughter, she is a teenager and she is very busy, like ridiculous, ridiculously busy. She has sport on every single day of the week. I think I'm going to start calling myself an Uber driver rather than a health coach because I feel like I'm an Uber driver more than anything. It's just insane. So she's a very busy young lady. And what was happening was the weeks that my husband was home from work, he would be standing there and he would go, honey, what time's Akira got dance tonight? And I'd be like, oh my God, it's on the fridge, babe. <laughs> it's on the fridge, on the calendar. Oh, yep. Okay. Every time, every time it asked me and then he'd go drop her off at dance and he'd come home. Babe, what time do I have to pick up Akira from dance? Oh my God. It's on the fridge. It's on the corner. <laughs> like it was just doing my head in. Absolutely doing my head in. And he was putting his appointments in his phone calendar and he wouldn't put them on the calendar on the fridge, on the written calendar. So, you know, I'd organize things and go, oh, he hasn't got anything on that day on the calendar. So, yep, yeah, I'll do this. We'll do that. And then he'd go, oh, no, I'm, I've got a haircut booked in for then. Or I'm going to the Cairo on that day. So it was just driving me nuts. It was just, oh, God. It was just a shambles. Like when you think you've got a family of five and you've got one kid that has sport every single day and you've got two little kids and then you've got myself and my husband who work and he works away, it was just becoming a bit of a joke. And not only me having to think constantly for everybody else, where they had to be and what time and all the rest of it, it was just doing my head in. So my husband came up with this idea of just syncing the calendars together on our phones. And so now what we do is every time there is an appointment, we put it in our phones and each of us have access to that. And then I basically see it because a notification comes up on my iPhone and I pop it down on my paper calendar because I'm a paper girl as well. I love my paper calendar on the fridge because I see it. It reminds me every single day what's happening and nothing gets missed. And if, you know, I'm on the phone to the dentist to make an appointment or whatever, I don't have to be holding my phone and looking at it while I'm trying to talk on it to look for appointments. I can just look on my paper calendar. So I do find that having the synced calendar on our phones, our devices, is an absolute godsend. So that can make life a heck of a lot easier. All right, the next one is to declutter. Now, I used to be the queen of hoarding. Don't ask my husband about this. He will just laugh at me. He will just <laughs> he will tell you how much of a hoarder I am. His his favorite saying is, you're a hoarder, your brother's a hoarder, your mother's a hoarder, your father's a hoarder. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be like my dad. And, you know, he's he's got stuff everywhere and oh my God. And yes, I did used to love keeping a lot of stuff. But then a few years ago, I reckon it was actually when I was pregnant with my son. So he's four and a bit now. When I was pregnant with him, I got sick to death of cleaning around stuff because I had this big belly and I had to move things to clean and vacuum and dust. And I just got sick of it that I just started decluttering and I just kept going. And probably since then, I haven't stopped. I keep getting rid of things. I'm much more mindful about what I purchase these days and we don't have as much stuff in our house. So now I only keep things that I truly love or that I use and anything else, you know, I, I do my best to pass it on to people that could use it, pass it on to the op shops or if it's junk, and can't be recycled or reused, then it has to go in the bin. So it has been amazing to declutter and to get rid of so much stuff out of our house because it's amazing what type of burden that puts on you. All right. So the next one is to outsource and delegate. So we have been working on this ourselves more and more. And sometimes when I say outsource or delegate, it doesn't have to be outside of your family. It could just be passing that on to somebody else within your family. So for example, tonight I wanted to get this podcast done. 
my husband has an injured back and he said to our teenage daughter, right tonight, you are doing the dishwasher. You're cleaning up from tea and you're emptying the dishwasher. Now, normally I quite like to do that straight after tea because it means my hubby can bring the little ones upstairs, get them ready for bed. And it's just a little bit of quiet time <laughs> for me away from the kids. I know that sounds silly, but it, it's normally a time that I can just kind of stay downstairs and, you know, listen to someone else's podcast and just cruise along and do my own thing. But tonight, no, we've got stuff to do and he wants to get the kids into bed early. So we've delegated that one to our teenager. Now, outsourcing. So this one, uh, the first thing that I can think of is we have a very small front yard. We don't have much lawn. It would kind of be ridiculous for us to own a lawnmower. So we delegate that job. We, we, no, we don't. We outsource that. Sorry. We outsource that job and we pay someone else to come and mow our tiny little strip of lawn out the front of our house because it's just something that saves us worrying about it. And our new lawnmower man is fantastic and he comes on a set day every, I think it's three weeks. And we don't even have to contact him. We don't have to nag him to come. He just comes and he does it. And it's fantastic. Um, one of my, my, mm, I guess, top of my list things that I really, really am aiming for is to outsource the house cleaning. That is something that I've wanted to do again for years. I used to do it a long time ago when I had my previous business. But because I've been home looking after the kids for the past four years and not working so much. I've just done it myself. But now that I'm getting busier and busier with my business again, I I, I think it's time to outsource that and, and find myself a cleaner. So yeah, it's just it's just using these little ideas to make life easier for yourself. Now, not so much specific celiac conversation this week, but I'm talking about making life easier for you because as you know, living with celiac disease is something that does make us feel more worn out. And it's it's often because our, our brains just don't really get to stop that often. We're constantly thinking about the next thing, aren't we? We're not constantly thinking about if we go to this place, you know, if we go to, um, say, a restaurant with friends, we need to be thinking ahead for what can we eat, calling ahead, making sure that there's no cross-contamination issues, things like that. So we we don't have it as easy as some people and we certainly don't have it as bad as some people, but we do just have these extra things to think about. So the more you can take off your plate, the easier everything else becomes. All right. So just to quickly recap my tips for you. So the first one is to have a running shopping list. And if you have a partner to have it on your phone and link it with them. The second one is meal planning, and I'll pop a link below for my meal plans made easy, gluten-free system for you guys. Third one is a synced calendar. The fourth one is to declutter. And the fifth one is to outsource or delegate. So I hope these ideas help you this week, come up with some ways to help you in your life and make things easier on yourself. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I really look forward to talking with you guys again soon. If you like this episode, please do me a favor and head to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. I'd really appreciate it and love to hear your feedback. Thanks, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, head to BelindaWhelan.com to get yourself a free copy of my exclusive ebook, 11 Mistakes People Make Going Gluten-Free Living with Celiac Disease.